And for those who enjoy this channel and would love to support us financially, please feel free to hit that donate link. We'd greatly appreciate it. God bless. That small but, DNA if compartment. If I could jump in there, I've given an example where mutation rates witnessed between Chinese men dates the Y chromosome at several hundred thousand years. So that's not the whole human genome because that goes against right. your point and that is part of the genome. Well, then, and that's why I countered that with, with the new study uh, that Dr. Jensen has put out uh, that I'll send to you. It, it's very new and he's he's looked at that study as well as other studies on, on different uh, Y chromosome mutation rates that points still to a you know Y chromosome variation and origin of, of 4,500 years. This relates to another prediction I made in the book and it relates specifically to human origins and to the Y chromosome. So what we're looking at here is differences between fathers and sons and then between all males going further back in history. So we looked at mitochondrial DNA which I f failed to mention is primarily maternally inherited so that tells you female ancestry. This is male ancestry, the other side of the equation. So at the time I published my book, I was aware of only two papers that directly measured father-son mutation rates. This is the first one, looking at a Chinese pedigree. So two men who had a common ancestor in the 1800s. Then you measure the amount of Y chromosome differences between them. And the result was three times 10 to the minus eighth mutations per base pair per generation. The specific details aren't that important. Just know that it's 10 to the minus eighth. We're gonna look at that number again in a moment. I also want you to see that the sequence coverage, 12x to 20x, is fairly low. If you don't know what that is, it's basically a measure of the quality of DNA sequence. There was a second paper that looked at multiple Icelandic pedigrees and discovered the same answer, 3 times 10 to the minus 8, and they had a similar level of sequence coverage or sequence quality. Well, what if you run those numbers through the equations that we did for mitochondrial DNA? What you see is this fits the evolutionary time scale and of course, correspondingly, it strongly contradicts the young earth one. Well, what's happened since then? There are two papers that have high quality Y chromosome sequence that reported a different answer. And the, the pattern I've just shown you, which is low quality, low mutation rate, high quality, high mutation rate, is a well-known relationship in the evolutionary literature. Just look at the supplemental information for the POSNIC 2016 1000 Genomes paper on uh, male Y chromosome ancestry, 1,244 men. They describe that relationship exactly, and we see it played out here. This looked at um, 320 or so men around the globe. As a control for this experiment, they looked at 31 pedigrees, and they found a mutation rate that was about 10 times faster. You have to really dig into the su supplemental information to find it. This paper in Nature from 2017 looked at 150 individuals, 50 parent-parent offspring trios. Again, it's high quality sequence, and they found again a mutation rate that's about 10 times faster. So the pattern that we see is high quality DNA sequences give you fast mutation rates. What implications does this have for the origin of the first man? You apply this again through the equations, as you might expect, the evolutionary model over predicts this. The young earth model captures exactly what we see. This leads to further testable predictions. Without deriving it, because it's basically textbook science, the Y chromosome phylogenetic tree allows you to infer changes in past population size. What am I talking about? So here's a diagram of changes in human population size over the last 3,000 years. The negative numbers refer to BC years, the positive numbers to AD. You can see in the last few hundred years there's been a spike in the human population growth. This is derived from archaeolo archaeological records and historical records. Well here's a Y chromosome tree derived from 171 men from around the globe, from Africa, Asia, Europe, uh, you've got Native Americans in here, Australian Aborigines, Papua New Guineans, from around the planet. I don't have time to derive why the, the spot circled in blue is best supported by the evidence as being the root of the tree. My point is, if this is indeed only 4,500 years old, and you infer population growth from this tree, it should match the growth that we know from the last 3,000 years. This diagram shows you exactly that match. The two black lines represent the statistical variability in the estimates of past population size. Of course, there's going to be variety because it's based on archaeology and historical records. The gray lines represent the statistical variety in the, in, inferred from the Y chromosome, and you can see there's about a 90% match. 
So yet another Tesla prediction that's coming true, and this opens up a whole new research area, which if we had more time, we could go through in great detail. For all those who appreciate the work that we're doing here on Standing for Truth, please hit that subscribe button because we are just getting started.